here we have a patient who is 8 year old male he had astray, he had consumed uh, alcohol so he had come with history of palpitation sweating chest pain to the emergency room now uh, these are the uh, findings in the monitor we have connected to monitors these are the findings the on in the monitor he, his heart rate is around 159 on 160 saturation is 85 percent BP is 122 by 80. You can start now. This is the basic information. You can check the patient and we can start. Uh, someone elderly patient with uh, age more than 60 years with uh, symptoms like chest pain, palpitation. Predominantly it is palpitation. palpitation. Chest pain is minimal. minimal. Palpitation, we immediately take the patient to the red area. Sir. Okay. And we will connect the monitors. Okay. And, uh, so, we have already connected. These are the findings you are seeing in the patient monitor. was conscious oriented. The patient is conscious, conscious oriented. oriented. Obeying commands. Obeying commands. Airway was? Airway is, uh, airway is normal. normal. There is no issue. On breathing, uh, we can see saturation of 86 percentage yes. and respiratory rate of 22. Yes. At this point of time, I would uh, make the patient the propped up position. So, we have kept the patient on propped up position. Please keep the patient on propped up position. Yes. And also, uh, I will start the patient on supplemental oxygen, approximately uh, 7 liters oxygen with uh, face masks. Okay. We will start uh, with uh, 7 liters of oxygen. oxygen. Okay. Face mask. Uh, sir, circulation uh, BP of circulation BP is 122 by 80 and heart rate, rate is 164. Uh, 164 Your rhythm is uh, narrow complex irregular rhythm. So at this point of time, we will put two large bore IV cannulas this, and uh, put IV cannulas. Uh, we will take the blood samples. Sir. Okay, which uh, samples you want to uh, take? We need uh, a cardiac enzyme, uh, routine blood investigations with electrolytes and uh, TFT. You have to exactly tell which all things you want. Uh, we need electrolytes basic, like sodium, potassium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, magnesium, calcium is needed, calcium is and needed. Uh, thyroid function does, thyroid the basic CBC, is. CRP has to be needed, CBC, CRP is uh, cardiac enzymes, cardiac enzymes, and NT pro BNP. BNP also, okay. So, this much uh, investigations are taken, yes, okay. Uh, and less secure, sir. Uh, then uh, the rhythm is uh, seems like a, a narrow QRS tachycardia hmm. uh, with irregular RR interval, sir. And, okay. I, and I'm not able to make out any morphological P waves. So at this point of time, no I will ask for an ECG also, sir. We'll take an ECG. Yes, Please uh, take a pure lead ECG. At the meantime, I will go ahead with the parallel survey, the disability, and okay. also the exposure. Temperature is normal. Temperature GRBS is, normal. is also normal. GRBS is also normal. Oh, normal. ECG is taken. ECG. That shows atrial fibrillation. So I will uh, first look at the standardization, then I compare the name, MRD, everything. Standardization uh, is normal. normal. MRD name, everything is there. Normal. So then I will see there is narrow QRS tachycardia mm -hmm. with irregular RR interval okay. uh, with no identifiable morphological P waves. Okay. These are suggestive of uh, atrial fibrillation. So, okay. so at this point of time, we need to identify whether it is a stable or unstable Atrial fibrillation. So far, the patient is stable according to your uh, monitor wise. Uh, the saturation has saturation also. Saturation is uh, improved after uh, starting oxygen. Oxygen. Uh, heart rate is around 160. Uh, heart rate range. is around 160. 160 range, sir. So, at this point of time, I also do a point of care ultrasound mm -hmm. uh, to look for uh, the LV status, any RWMA is present, and also ejection fraction, any curly B lines, early signs of any pulmonary edema. Okay, there is no uh, evidence of pulmonary edema. Ejection fraction is only eight, uh, sorry, uh, 48 percent. Percentage, sir. So, uh, there is no hypotension, no acute altered sensorium, no signs of shock at present, uh, no ischemic chest discomfort at present, okay. and no signs of any heart failure. At, so, at present, nothing is there, everything is, there. is stable. So, we will take it as a stable uh, tachyardhemia, sir. Okay. Uh, so, at this point of time, we have two approaches. One, we can go with rate control or rhythm control. But in the emergency setting, we will go ahead with the right control, sir. Okay. Uh, no history of any bronchial asthma, no hypotension as such is there. So, we will give uh, injection. Bronchial asthma is there. Bronchial asthma is there, sir. Uh, so, ideally, uh, we, uh, beta blocker was the uh, drug of choice we initially give for right control. Uh, mm -hmm. Then the other choices can be verapamil and dilithium. So you, you tell us what to, give, what to be given now. Uh, if, at this point of time, we can give uh, either verapamil or DTS. You tell exactly what drug you want to give, what is the dose you want to give, uh, how, how fast you have to give. Uh, verapamil can be given 5 to uh, 15 mg over 2 minutes and DTS can be given 15 to 20 mg which one you want to select? over uh, 2 Among minutes. Among these two, which one you want to select? You have to tell the EMT now what to be given. No. Verapamil, sir. You give verapamil. 10, 10 mg you want to give? Yes, 10 mg okay, 10 over mg 2 minutes. Give. We'll watch.
given still the heart rate is 160 okay, okay. so, so at present patient is having uh, hypotension sir okay. and after giving verapamil he has developed the hypotension. hypotension 82 by 62 is the bp heart rate is still remaining slightly higher only so it has become now patient has become unstable maybe due to your verapamil okay now it has created a problem here so what to be done now? so we will take this as a unstable tachyarrhythmia so there's okay. hypotension definitely there Okay. So, the next step in unstable tachyarrhythmia is to go for a synchronized DC cardio version, sir. So, please. First, we will arrange the later and first we will, uh, if possible, we will take the consent, we will explain the procedure if at all, okay. patient is conscious so and we have taken the consent, we so have explained the procedure, we have arranged the intubation tray, if at all, patient okay. goes into Everything arrest. is arranged. We will also arrange for uh, procedural sedation also, sir. Okay, what do you want to give? Uh, we can give at present uh, MIDAS, sir. MIDAS, dose? Uh, 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 2 to 4 mg sir. So you can give 2 mg. Okay. I wish that. I wish that. Sir. Uh, then uh, we will give synchronized cardio version. Uh, how much? 100 to 120 joules sir. 120 so tell joules. Tell exactly how much you want. Uh, 120 joules. 120 joules. Select. Synchronized. Give to him. So it's uh, ready now. Ready for shock. Please give the shock. Uh, so we will charge, then we will press the sync button, then we will position. All clear. Shock is delivered. Del delivered. Now we will watch. We look at the central pulse. Okay. They are getting central the pulse, pulse present. But it is still feeble now. We will wait. Uh, what is the rhythm? Okay, BP has increased after this. But still the rhythm is abnormal. You can watch now. What is the rhythm now? Uh, rhythm is still uh, irregular R interval, sir. Okay. And requires tachycardia with uh, irregular R interval. Still in AF, sir. Okay. At present, okay. vital stable, but uh, stable tachycardia. No, it has become, patient has become stable, stable. but still the uh, rhythm is same. Hmm. Rhythm has uh, uh, come back to the previous uh, state. So at present we will go ahead with rhythm control, sir. Okay. Uh, we will use uh, amiodarone, sir. Amiodarone. Amiodarone. Uh, one ampule contains three ml. That corresponds to 150 mg. So we will give 150 mg amiodarone hmm. uh, over 10 minutes, sir. Okay. Followed Please. by uh, one mg per minute. That is 30 ml per hour okay. over the next eight hours and. Uh, uh, 15 ml per hour or 0.5 uh, mg per minute over the next 16 hours. Okay. We will connect the defib and we will watch for the next 24 hours. Okay. Meanwhile, the uh, your reports have come. Patient is having hyperthyroid. Hyperthyroidism. Uh, one of the most common causes, reversible causes of AF is uh, hyperthyroidism. Sir. Hyper. Uh, now the report have come. It is uh, T3, T4 is uh, very high. What should be done? Do now. Uh, rest everything, electrolytes, everything. Everything is normal. Everything is normal. Sir. So we will uh, start the patient on. We can start either on uh, propanol, prop prop sir. You tell. Uh, we will start the patient on propanol, sir. Propanol. Oh. Start the patient on propanol. What is the dose? So, what is the dose? Uh, Okay, now the, after starting amidron, it is rhythm has come back to normal, rate has come back to normal, BP is stable. Now, can we discuss the case now? So, here you have a patient who had atrial fibrillation. He had history of alcohol, definitely he had history of alcohol, estrenate. But the problem after analyzing all the lab report, you, come, you came to know that it is hyperthyroidism, thyroidism induced, uh, hyperthyroidism induced atrial fibrillation. Uh, his age you have to consider, a elderly male, 80 year old, there is a high possibility of uh, thyroid malignancy also. Okay. Whatever it is, atrial fibrillation is the rhythm and is, he was stable. How do atrial fibrillation stable rhythm are different from supraventricular tachycardia rhythm in a patient like this? How, what is the difference in management? As you have a patient who is having SVT with a stable rhythm, you have a patient with atrial fibrillation with uh, like stable parameters. What is the difference? Uh, in SVT cases, sir, we will administer 
drug of choice will be uh, failing sir what is the difference in management from first onwards you are getting a patient with svt same like this svt supraventricular tachycardia bp is stable pulse is very <coughs> high narrow complex stable regular. patient initially we will go ahead with uh, vagal manner sir carotid massage we will try can you do carotid massage for this patient how do you do initially we will look at the carotid bruy we will okay, look for any carotid bruy is there then and we will uh, make the patient 45 degree uh, head should be turned sir. okay and then we will give uh, okay palpate the pulse and we will give carotid uh. massage for uh, 20 to 30 seconds when you are doing carotid massage what will you look for uh, we will look at the heart rate right? heart rate uh, okay if the heart rate is coming down uh, you have to uh, like uh, reduce the uh, carotid massage uh, this one and uh, after that suppose car after carotid massage transiently it may come back to normal then again it will normally it will go back to the original state that is the svt what is the next option adenosin sir how do you give adenosin adenosin we will give by the uh, ejv sir actually ejv is not the patient has no. just come to emergency room we don't know what is the state she has put two iv lines in the no. peripheries how do you manage you tell me how to give adenosin in this patient uh, adenosin is given as a rapid flush technique sir in you the... order uh, initially we will give 6 mg adenosin sir give uh, you have to tell full order that is a problem you have to tell to the uh, emt full order of giving uh, how to give adenosin so initially we will arrange the cannulas and we will arrange the rapid flush mm. uh, at the point of time uh, you, we will give the adenosin the time itself we will give the rapid flush so you have not asked the history of asthma here that is very important patient uh, is asthmatic that we have told first itself patient is asthmatic so you can still give adenosin but only thing is when there is asthma there is high chance of asthmatic episode after giving adenosin that you have to anticipate okay whatever it is adenosin you have given 6 mg how do you give that how do you flush that adenosin uh, as soon as you give the adenosin you will uh, give the flush normal flush we will give one and immediately we will uh, make the hand okay uh, forward and okay so you after giving 6 mg you raise the hand this patient is having a central line or ejv is there what what is the dose difference between a peripheral uh, adenosine and central line adenosine half the dose half the dose is enough if you have a central line there is a difference in icu and an er er uh, you have no central line icu you may have put in central line so half the dose is enough so that is the main difference you can give either uh, carotid sinus massage or adenosine in svt but that is not correct in atrial fibrillation rest all things are same you are giving uh, uh, beta blockers you are giving uh, what is that uh, diltiazem verapamil all these things are same action where where do they act these drugs beta blocker adenosin sorry beta blocker or uh, what is it uh, diltiazem verapamil what is the action of all these drugs uh, block av no blockers calcium channel blockers verapamil uh, verapamil uh, diltiazem so, calcium in conduction channel. system where they act av no sno to av no that pathway they try to block the conduction okay but uh, there is another drug called as digoxin what is action of digoxin can you give digoxin in this patient uh, hmm? can you give in lv failure will you give. can give but it is not uh, not that uh, like important because the main indication for digoxin is failing heart with atrial fibrillation otherwise it should not be given why it should not be given why we are not uh, why we are not uh, comfortable with digoxin it has got a high levels of arrhythmia it's a Uh, it's an antiarrhythmic drug at the same time it's a proarrhythmic drug okay so you are given amedron he is already having hyperthyroidism do it uh, like uh, create a problem yes sir uh, amedron resembles t4 sir it okay. can precipitate thyrotoxic so process. sometimes it can produce uh, hyperthyroidism because it can produce thyroiditis and initially hyperthyroidism can be initiated you are given propranolol propranolol is available only as tablet so what else you can give here what is the other drug what is the advantage of propranolol over other beta blockers why we are not selecting a beta blocker other than propranolol you are given propranolol that is a ideal drug but uh, that has to be given iv we don't have iv indian uh, this one drug uh, manufacturers they are not they are not manufacturing iv propranolol so what else you can give what is the idea of giving propranolol in hyperthyroidism all beta blockers are same but uh, there is a advantage of uh, uh, like uh, advantage uh, over other beta blockers for propranolol what is the advantage 
this is the only beta blocker which crosses the blood brain barrier. barrier. So, palpitation, tremors, all these things can be controlled by propranolol. But the other factor like uh, tachycardia can be controlled by any other beta blocker. Okay. So, he is asthmatic. Can we give uh, metoprolol? No. Sure. Definitely you can give. Some patients can have aggravation of asthma because of beta blockers. Okay. It, which is more important here controlling the rate and save the patient or just uh, look for the uh, uh, like uh, uh, asthmatic episode which can be created by this beta blocker which is uh, better rate control. you control the rate is that is more important because he is having a good uh, cardiac output everything is good beta blockers are ideal choice because he is having once you know that it is uh, tachyarrhythmia is due to atrial fibrillation beta blockers are ideal choice than your amiodrone or uh, what is that uh, other drug you started uh, diltiazem verapam that is a better choice but only after completion of the case you came to know that it is uh, uh, hyperthyroidism induced uh, atrial fibrillation what else you want to give now so the, the rate is controlled patient is fully stable but you know that this patient is having alcoholism and he is having hyperthyroidism he can anytime he can go back to the uh, previous rhythm and problems can occur any other things you want to start up, start for this patient no, one of this patient is an alcoholic so we can give time in time in should be given okay uh, then uh, then whether patient needed any anticoagulation or not we have to classify based on the chart of scores okay so should we give uh, based on the score uh, there is no cardiac failure but age two points are given uh, I'm not asking about long-term therapy of atrial fibrillation. Now, this patient is admitted in your ICU. He'll be here for three, four days because he's having atrial, atrial fibrillation, hyperthyroidism, you have started uh, uh, beta blockers. Should we give heparin for this patient now? Mm. Yes, sir. Huh? The thing is that everything is normal. This patient is going to be at him to be in your ICU for next three four days. That is the only problem. Should we start apparent? Huh? You have to start. Why you have to start? We are not talking about the atrial fibrillation part. That is completely controlled. If the patient again develops atrial fibrillation, you have to anticoagulate the patient. But here the patient is admitted in your ICU. He is not going to move around for next three four days. To prevent at least DVT, you have to start the. Uh, uh, heparin or low molecular weight heparin but long term is having single episode of atrial fibrillation that also because of a reversible problem you can easily reverse it he may not develop atrial fibrillation again so 81 year old uh, patient who is having a reversible cause for atrial fibrillation no need to continue uh, either warfarin or heparin for a long time but this patient will be in your ICU for next three days he may not move around so to prevent at least a uh, deep vein thrombosis he had to start either heparin or low molecular weight heparin. How do you con control the uh, hyperthyroid state other than propranolol? What are other things you can give? Yeah. Yeah. Propyl thyroxyl or carbamazole you have to start. That has, has to be started. Okay. Now, what is this case? Finally, now you have to tell me what is this case, how we manage the case and is there any mistakes in management? What do you feel that have you made any mistakes? At least in second phase of the case, before giving adenosine, you never asked the history of asthma. That was given the first time itself. Okay. And instead of propranolol, which is an oral drug which cannot be used in emergency, you can easily go for metoprolol. And traditionally, we all think that metoprolol can produce. Asthmatic asthma. episode, but that is only in selected patients, not in all patients. Many patients with asthma, COPD, they are all, all are on beta blockers. If somebody is on beta blocker and he is not developing any asthmatic episode, it can be continued. But when you have an asthmatic patient, you have to ask the history and any time patient can develop an asthmatic episode. Only thing you should be able to manage it. Okay. Now, what is this case? How, do you, how, how did you manage the case? Actually, this is a case of... Uh tachyarrhythmia atrial fibrillation that is precipitated by alcohol and also hypothyroidism. Okay, instead of tachyarrhythmia or instead of telling atrial fibrillation, you can tell as a emergency medicine doctor, you can tell it is a narrow complex, irregular rhythm where the patient is completely stable. Then that tell you, tell you that where to go for the management according to your 
ACLS protocol. So there is no doubt if you tell atrial fibrillation again, there are a lot of uh, uh, subheadings will be there. Here you are specifically telling, okay, that will be easy for somebody to follow. Okay. And this patient has come with atrial fibrillation, whatever it is, it's a narrow complex, irregular rhythm. Where the patient is stable, how did you manage? Uh, initially, we managed with the rate control. Okay. And then the so, in emergency medicine, rate control is more important than rhythm control. Why it is like that? Uh, because as the rate decreases, diastolic interval increases. So. Diastolic rate? Uh, decreases. Uh, okay. When the rate is increased, diastolic time reduces and that uh, makes the patient more unstable. Here, you are trying to reduce the rate so that diastolic time will increase. It makes the patient more stable. Okay. So, that is the most important issue in any tachycardia. Your aim is only to control the rate than rhythm. Okay, rhythm can be controlled with amidron. So here, first itself, you can, if you want, you can start amidron. There is nothing wrong in that. But if you are following up a, a protocol like ACLS protocol, according to the protocol, your duty is only to control the rate. Okay, but ultimately, many patients will end up in uh, using uh, amidron that controls both rate and rhythm uh, without any major issue. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you.